Greetings, brothers and sisters, and Yeshua HaMashiach. I pray that you're all doing well. Today's daily devotional in red. Red meaning words speaking by the great I Am Himself, Jesus the Christ. For November 3rd, 2002. No, 2002. <laughs> November 3rd, 2022. Luke 12.15 Real treasure Take heed and beware of covetousness, for one's life does not consist in the abundance of the things he possesses. Perhaps one of the, world's, perhaps one of the most well-known Bible verses is from Psalm 23. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. When God is our source of joy, when, is he, when he is our exceedingly great treasure, all the material goods of this world heaped together are nothing but trash compared to what we have in Christ. And this is what Paul affirmed from Philippians 3, 8. Yet indeed I also count all things loss for the excellence of the knowledge of Christ Jesus my Lord, for whom I have suffered the loss of all things, and count them as rubbish, that I may gain Christ. How much money would we like to have in the bank? What figure would give us perfect peace to face an uncertain future? One million? Ten million? Jesus said to beware of greed. It is important. Somehow, violation of the Tenth Commandment seems less serious than theft or adultery, yet it is often the catalyst that sparks theft and adultery. While the godless rich seem to have everything in life, they are desperately poor without the Savior. Financial riches are worthless on the day of wrath, but righteousness delivers from death. Hallelujah. Soul search. Are you ever are we ever envious of the rich? Are there things that we covet? If so, Father, help us to be content in Christ. There's an epistle that Paul wrote that he said, I have learned to be content with many things, and I have learned to be content with little things. Meaning that he's, the joy of the Lord is with him, whether he has a lot of things, he's rich, or whether he's locked up in prison and chains because of his faith. The joy of the Lord is his strength. I think about Paul a lot and what he must have gone through and the thorns on, on the side of his flesh, you know, were they physical or they were just nightmares of him slaughtering the innocent, you know, the innocent Christians that he, that he now, that he, that once... Once he met Jesus Christ on the road to Damascus and uh, it just changed his life, you know. The Spirit of the Lord entered him and he became the greatest disciple there was. Well, the, 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 the uh, disciples to the Gentiles, at least. Um, it's just absolutely amazing. If you ever want a lot of encouragement, because we see the uh, the wicked and the evil people that that happen to be rich, read Psalm thirty-seven. It's a long psalm, but read it in its entirety. I recommend the New King's James Version, not the King's James Version, because you're not going to really understand it that well, because we we don't. We haven't studied Old English, so how are we going to read Old English? <laughs> That's why there's uh, a lot of good translations out there. I'm not going to get into the whole King James Bible debate because it's 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 that's what Satan wants. He wants division, and I'm not going to give him that honor at all. So, anyways, the Lord bless you all.
And remember, our redemption draws very, very, very nigh. Hallelujah.